are freezing. Hey, Internet Ram, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got someone on the line, and he's over there in the European area. His name is Bradley. Are you there? I'm here. I'm here. Can you hear me? Are we back? Are we, we are live? back. We've had a little bit of glitch, but it's still just amazing that I can connect from Minneapolis, Minnesota, all the way over to you're in Holland, or? Yeah, in Holland, yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a ways away, and here we're talking in real time. That's fascinating. Yeah, it is. And recording it, too. Yeah, I, I got it. I got to give it up for technology. Sometimes it's tough, and but they use it to fly airplanes. So <laughs> fly airplanes and do this. Yes, exactly. So if you can try be on Wi-Fi and have a video conference call while there flying, that part, that part goes beyond me. So Bradley, I don't do these very long. I keep them kind of short so people have a time to consume the entire video and basically just find out who you are, what you do, where you do it, and all that kind of stuff, and then find out how we okay. can uh, connect with you. So. First off, who's Bradley? Are you uh, married, got kids? Are you single, wild, and crazy? What's up there? <laughs> <laughs> married, got kids, wild and crazy. Does that, does that work? All that? Hey. Every, everything, but, everything but single. How many kids you got? I have two kids, two boys, 14 and 12. So you don't know what it's like to raise them. over here with me to Holland. Okay, yeah. So yeah. how was it raising kids? I don't have any. Um. So there's no like return guarantee. There's that. <laughs> you save the receipt, it doesn't it's work. Pretty much, you you know you break it, you buy it. <laughs> okay. and so you're in it for the long haul. <laughs> got, it, got it. How long have you been married? Uh, well, uh, Nineteen years as of yesterday. Really? Wow. Well, yeah. congratulations on your anniversary. I've done like seven or something. I don't remember. Right. I don't know if it's seven or five or ten, but yeah, connected. <laughs> yeah. So I read a little bit of what you do. You got a, I think the domain was like past the sour cream and stuff like that. Yeah. It's just, it, it just grabs people's attention right away because it's so different than, you know, this dot com yeah. stuff. So yeah. can you share a little bit about what you do? I believe you're an author. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I had, I uh, lived in the States the past 15 years. I had a company for the past 10 and then uh, was really just getting tired of the company. I mean, that's putting it nicely and just was looking for a way out. But one of the struggles I found was I find, I use the word comfortable. I think the word comfortable is sort of hard to, harder to escape from than sometimes, you know, you lost it all, your, your house went away in a tornado and everything's terrible and below zero and you gotta fight back and scratch back to the top. But then you, you, sometimes you can because you have that, that disadvantage of, of going to such a point of such such low depth. Whereas I find that if you're just cruising along and everything is sort of okay, you know, okay enough, that's harder to get out of. Ah, oh, I totally get it. It's almost like, um, I guess, like the frog in the boiling water thing. It happens slowly to you and you don't realize it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think a lot of people are, I don't want to say suffering, but a lot of people I think have secret sort of dreams that they'd like to get to but then the question is when are they going to do that and often the answer is tomorrow mm -hmm. except that tomorrow doesn't officially exist you know, right. there's today yesterday's gone there's today that's kind of all we have well i can so, get the suffering thing the buddhists have that philosophy that we are suffering and the idea is to get out of that because because we do have this physical constraint that we live in the gotta make money and i've only got 24 hours in a day and there's all these things that are mentally confine us Whereas when you're free to do whatever you want, it could be that you don't have a clock. You know, the day when yeah. the sun sets, you can still continue. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of clocks, I mean, that what, for me, my father passed away about three years ago now. And that was sort of a big eye-opening clock, sort of, of mortality. Sure. Realizing, oh, oh, wait a minute, we, we don't actually have forever. <laughs> so I better hurry up that tomorrow plan of doing what I dream about doing and start doing it today. Got it. So that's when things really turned around for me. Unfortunately, I, I, my sort of advice to people is to not wait for some big external event to push you over the edge, but to try to make it happen before you have to wait for the big bad thing to happen. Yeah, that's part of the reason I got out. of. I used to be in the events industry, and I used to produce trade shows and expos, and it got stressful, and I had a mild stroke. I had a TIA. It wasn't a stroke. It was oh. called a mini stroke. Yeah, it was just a shot over the bow, saying I was too stressed out. I wasn't exercising. I wasn't eating right, and I just right. realized there that I could I could have had a stroke, been in a wheelchair, just died. 
Yeah. So, so I, that's when yeah. I shifted and I decided I was going to be a mobilepreneur, so I go with just a phone. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Very cool. But, so, but, but I, 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 my, my hope is that people don't wait for that big thing to happen. Right. And, exactly. And hopefully, maybe a conversation like ours can resonate strongly enough to make people sit up and take notice and, and do that thing, take that first step towards that dream they're after that they secretly know they're, they're hiding within them. Because it's otherwise, it's going to sort of rot and fester, like a disease, like like cancer. Uh, and exactly. This that you had or have, it's going to sit around until you until you do something about it, until you let it see the light of day. Like who was it that said, "Don't die with the music still inside you"? Yeah. Somebody yeah. said that. I, think it was I don't know. Oprah but, yeah, or Wayne that's Dyer. Exactly it, yeah, I forgot who that was. Uh, yeah. So th so that's I'm living proof of being able to make it happen when you decide to take action. And, and the key word there is decide. A action's great, but you have to decide. It right. has to be in your mind that you're, okay, I'm gonna now go down this path. I'm gonna pivot and change my direction. Yeah, and, and uh, it is a matter of decision rather than choice. Um, I quit drinking quite a few years ago because I decided to. If I would have chose to, I could always go back the other direction. But this is like burning your boat kind of thing. And yeah. like decide is like uh, the root word is like suicide, pesticide, homicide to cut off. Yeah, yeah. So when you decide, there's yeah. no other choice, and that's it. Very that's interesting. It. So now you, I think you got it. What do you have a book? Yeah, I, I have I a book called it. Every Single Day, and it's a lot about this story. And every single day, my I, it started. The name started because the dentist asked. He said, uh, he said, only brush the teeth you want to keep. <laughs> I had to think about it for a second, but then I thought, well, wait a minute, I, I want to keep all of them. He's, and he's like, exactly. And so that's my point on the day. Which, which days do you want to live the life where you're truly who you want to be? Which sure. days do you want to put the effort towards that life of you in the future? You know, every other, every other Thursday or, or today, maybe every other day. That's, you know, what about weekend? Yeah, in the so, moment. Do you have a copy of the book? Uh, not within reach. Darn it. I'll, uh, maybe I'll grab a graphic or something and stick it on some you, of the posts. You know, what, you know what's interesting about the copy of the book? I, somewhere in, in my house here, I have a, a copy of the, the original edition. The original edition, I had two pills on the cover. They looked like aspirin. In fact, they were aspirin. And I had then sort of designed a little logo on the, with Photoshop, made a little logo on the aspirin because my original t subtitle was also um, about transformation. And how you could take, if, if you could take a simple pill, like the placebo effect, you could take a simple right. pill to, to trigger this dream within you, to, to shake it loose, would you do it? And that's where most people would say, oh, well, sure. Except then the, the, the joke or the kicker or the bad news is that, yeah, sorry, there's not a pill. The pill is your decision. Right. And um, I think that some people, after they took the pill, they go, oh, my God, what did I do? I'm going to go for my dream and I'm going to have to work to get it. Yeah. It's not yeah. just a pill. I'm going to have to actually do this now. Yeah. So then you, so if you, if you're at that point, you might, you know, you can just skip the pill anyway, because the pill, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the idea of a placebo, right? A placebo right. sort of trick, sort of tricks you into thinking you're really doing it. So my point is then why not just really do it on your own anyway? Do you focus, do you focus on focus? That kind of thing, like focus on your dream, have it real crystal clear, and then start taking yeah. actions to go for it. Well, I also, uh, I, I like the words clarity. I like the words focus. But also, again, with me and my example, with my dad passing away, what that gave me was clarity. Mm -hmm. And then in that clarity, I could find my focus. But without my dad having passed away, I was just stuck in the weeds. I was just spinning my wheels and not living the life I wanted to live and, and not happy doing it. It's one of those aha moments. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it really was. Yeah, I, I know that for some, I've always been self-employed other than out of high school. I had a job, but I just realized that I just cannot do a job type thing where I'm stuck. Yeah. I need to be free. Of, so I, need, I have that freedom thing. That, I don't know what it is. It's just yeah. the way that it is. <laughs> but it, see, freedom is sort of a later stage. I have different sort of stages or parts of the book. And freedom is a later stage that you cannot attain until you have this clarity and focus. Because if you're bogged down in the weeds, you can't get to freedom. Freedom I, is basically a, a freedom from decision making. 
I just had that exact situation. I was in Costa Rica, and I'm, I'm doing this internet-based lifestyle thing so okay. that you can be free and mobile. And I was down in Costa Rica, and I sold a CD on Amazon. And all of a sudden, I realized I cannot fulfill the order because my CDs are back in Minneapolis. Yeah. So all of a sudden, that was an aha for me that I'm not totally free. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so I got to go with digital products and experiences. That's what I'm pretty, pretty much promoting yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. From the, the company I had that sort of it was a marketing agency to just jumping right into books. And however, from this book, I've been getting requests for coaching as well as speaking because people, it's, it's amazing when you write a book. Sure. And it doesn't need to win awards or, you know, get you any, any official status. It's just the fact that you wrote the book. Yeah. And this, this is a little hint here to people listening. Just because you wrote the book, it already gives you a leg up. Credibility. Whatever it is, the topic is. Absolutely. So, yeah, and you also learn through writing the book. I could say I'm an expert, but then when I write the book about the topic, well, yeah. then I'm going to be even more of an expert. I just had a little vision for for you. You, you want, want me to share? Sure. <laughs> I had this thought of like a pharmacy because you had that that pill. Yeah. That you do a lot of books, but they're not books. They're based. I mean, they're they're books, little mini booklets, but they're prescriptions. Yeah. Little little pills. You take this little book instead of writing a big book like this big giant thick one. Right. You do a bunch of little little books about things because yeah. then you just write and you could sell them and they could people buy them for 10 bucks or whatever. It's a small well, amount of money. Funny you mention that because that's exactly what I'm doing now. I'm doing cool. shorter books and also I'm, I'm very much into audio. And so I'm recording the audio books as well because me, I, I'd rather be walking with my dog in the woods and listening to an audio book than sitting down reading. Sure. And even me, I, I say this as a writer. So as a writer, I'm allowed to say this. That uh, I'd rather listen to a book than read it. If you if you have a backstory, and that that pasta sour cream does have a backstory, which you can read about on the site. But it's also easy to remember. It. I remembered it. Yeah, yeah, I remembered it. There's another friend of mine, uh, Brian Basilico. He has the Bacon Podcast. I'm not sure what the domain is, but it's about bacon. <laughs> it's it's a different than spam. You get a bunch of bacon, you want the bacon, but spam, you get too much right. of it. Right, right. <laughs> so. Here's my favorite question, and I kind of get the gist from just talking with you, but that's the big why question. Why are you doing this? Why aren't you still in branding? Why aren't you like a surf instructor? Or why haven't you started a yoga studio? Or why aren't you teaching grade school? Why are you doing this? It's, it's, it's basically what we talked about from cl clarity and having that moment of clarity and seeing what my true heart desires. Mm -hmm. And it's to tell stories and write and teach, and mainly through books but also through speaking, but to uh, spread, spread, spread the word and spread the, I mean, it sounds a little, maybe a little weird, but I feel like I've sort of found eternal happiness and eternal joy and I've sort of found the source of it. And one of the sources of it is doing what you love to do. Right. Because none of this costs me energy or, 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 or time. Yeah. So, so speaking of that sort of zombie type person, that's who my book can really help because my book is sort of a wake-up call to begin the life that you truly know that you should be living. Got it. And you're probably not doing it. Well, do you have any interest in Costa Rica? Uh, sure. Really? I'm building an event center down there, and I'm looking for people like you to come down and do retreats and give people wake-up calls down in, in the jungle, the Costa Rican jungle right in the rainforest. Awesome. So, yeah. Sounds great. I just moved a whole lot farther away. <laughs> That's just an air, airplane ride. But, they, but there's airplanes, right? Exactly. They just... <laughs> well, Bradley, I really appreciate you taking the time. And if you've got some other books coming out in the future and you want to uh, get exposure to my network and audience, let's do another one. And I like the idea of those little pocket books. That sounds pretty cool. So yeah. looking forward to that. Yeah. So appreciate you taking the day to be on Synergy Cafe. This is Magic Brad with uh, with Bradley. And how do you say the last name again? Is Charbonneau. Charbonneau. Yeah. And so if anybody can spell that, they can. I'm the only one who comes up. If you can I can spell it, it's C H A R B O N N E A U. That's it. That's it. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Thanks Bradley. Appreciate you. Thank you. Peace. Peace. Thanks so much.